The first part of this video shows the case when the whole base for grouting is divided into sections. Prepare the substrates and formwork, then seal around it as shown in the first video. Divide the whole base into approximately 1 meter wide sections for grouting using timber battens and a suitable release agent as formers with foam or thick tape on the top and bottom so they can be removed easily afterwards. After setting and hardening, the formers are completely removed and the hardened grout shoulder must be carefully cleaned to remove any residual release agent or other contaminants before grouting this next section as before. Expansion joints in and around the grouted sections for structural movement are usually made with 25 mm or 1 inch closed cell polyethylene or neoprene foam rubber or polystyrene, etc placed as directed by the responsible engineer. Position expansion joints so that they do not contain any anchor bolts. Use temporary supports according to the volume, pressure and the weight of the grout to be used. The machinery is then put in place and leveled to its final position. Protect any adjacent steel surfaces with tape and use plastic sheeting to protect the equipment as necessary and prevent adhesion of the epoxy grout. The flow of the grout should not stop during the grouting process and the head of pressure must be maintained. Typically an inclined grout box or feed hopper on the formwork will help to do this and enhance grout flow as well as minimizing air entrapment. The height of this box can be adjusted according to the flow distance and head of pressure required. Ensure that the height of the grout does not decrease to the level of the bottom of the base plate or below. Always keep it above this level by continuously pouring freshly mixed grout into the hopper. Fill the odd section numbers first and the even sections in between can be grouted as soon as the grout in the odd sections is cured. The form is removed and the surface is cleaned. During curing of the grout, do not move or adjust the formwork or the machinery. After full curing, the formwork can be removed and the necessary torque applied to the anchor bolts. The second part of this video shows what to do if any freshly poured grout stops moving due to an unforeseen interruption in supply, for example. This can be reactivated and made to flow again using a suitable steel chain. Pull the chain slowly, not abruptly, through the grout behind the tongue or wet leading edge, which the chain should not break through. Note, this procedure is not a normal requirement as the grout is designed to flow by itself. Again, after full curing of the epoxy grout, the formwork can be removed and the necessary torque applied to the anchor bolts. Part 3 shows a solution to one of the most critical potential problems in grouting in the discontinuous mixing and grout supply process. The epoxy grout is mixed in batches, ensuring the correct mix ratio is maintained, but the head of pressure height in the feed hopper must also be maintained to maintain the grout flow and avoid air entrapment. One method to overcome this problem is to use a so-called grout box to hold a buffer stock of mixed grout for short periods and thereby provide an almost continuous supply. Part 4 shows how to pour the grout through a delivery tube inserted through the area to be grouted so that the grout is effectively delivered to the far side pulling the tube back, immersed in the grout, and following the filling progress. The delivery tube being always immersed in the grout also helps to avoid air entrapment. Once again, after full curing of the epoxy grout, the formwork can be removed and the necessary torque applied to the anchor bolts.